don't forget to subscribe. This video is gonna be on how to care for African dwarf frogs, such as that one, and such as that one in the back. I have two. First, we're gonna talk about some background knowledge. So dwarf frogs are fairly easy to keep. They they aren't messy, but the food that you feed them are more messier than the dwarf frogs. They don't have too much waste to give out. So dwarf frogs require one gallon per frog. So I have a 5.5 gallon tank right here, so I could fit five frogs if I really wanted to, but I have two. So African dwarf frogs don't necessarily Need a heater unless their water is that doesn't at drop below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're gonna have to leave some t water on top for the frogs to come up and breathe air. And um, though I think of that, you don't want to have too much of a longer tank because it could be stressful for them to swim up to get air, and they're not the best swimmers, so. That could be very stressful for them. Moving on to food. African dwarf frogs do not have the best eyesight and they usually smell the food. There are a variety of foods of types of worms, frozen worms, tubiflex worms, blood worms you can feed them. You can actually put algae tablets in the water and they'll eat those. There's also aquatic food, uh, aquatic frog and tadpole pellets. I don't suggest those because it seems like they just get lost. If you have them in a tank with fish and a uh, filter, they'll just get lost and the other fish will eat them. There are numerous ways to feed them. First, if you have an open place, you can get this plate type material to put into the water and put food on top of it for the frogs to get and they'll smell it and go up to it. I like to actually use this you need some type of wood material doesn't harm any frogs fish or the water and i usually put tuba flex worms on here and then i stick it right in front of them and they eat it just fine i'll show you an example of that i want to make sure the piece of food is on pretty strong so it doesn't float to the top you don't want too much because you can make the water pretty cloudy do that these are a bunch of worms, frozen worms in here. Here's an example of me feeding one of my dwarf frogs. As you can see, he ripped that whole thing out. I try to want too much. And some of it will float to the top, but the other fish, if you have other fish, will indeed eat it. And they could always eat it for later if they really wanted to. Oh my gosh. You see, the fish will eat it. You could, if you really wanted to, these stick to the glass or plastic. You can put it in the tank and push it against the glass if he wants it. And I push it against the glass to the water, and it will stay there until someone rips it off. It's a good idea. Not only will the frogs eat it, but the fish will eat it. You can see he wants, he wants more. Going up looking for it, or smelling it, I should say. He found his wish up top. Another, another food that you could feed frogs are live guppy fry or any live bearer fry. I do not do that, but as you can see, this is what guppy fry look like. I have a bunch still up there, but I would never feed my frog any of these. Next, I'm moving on to plants. Now, I have a lot of plants in here because it makes them feel like like they're in their natural environment, a sense of security. It doesn't matter if they're fake or real. I would always suggest real plants, because mine is falling over, because they can always eat off the plants too, and it's just more in their natural environment. As you can see, 
he was just on top of the plant. They won't damage the plants, but they could pick at it. <laughs> and that's just falling over because the other fish pick at it. Now, go along with plants. They could hide in the plants because they are pretty shy creatures. They don't like being around most other stuff, but they'll they'll deal with it. It's not like they're gonna attack them. Such as this. This is a good hiding small decoration. They can go in. That plant is a good hiding decoration. They could go in. I've seen them hide. I have some rocks in here that I've seen them hide under before. This one got knocked over, but I gotta fix that. I just saw them hide on top of the plant. But mine have grown to be not too shy with the other fish and will hang around them anytime. Moving on, next is going to be the filter. So the filter isn't necessarily needed, it's just optional. It, Like I said earlier, the food will make the tank dirty, so you might want to filter. So it keeps the water clear and not as dirty if you do not have a filter i would suggest weekly water changes for tank or bowl whatever you're keeping them in as you can see i have a light in the tank um, and you don't need one but i think that a light is good for a tank for them saying that frogs don't have the best eyesight that could help them see better um you don't if you do have a light you don't want to keep it on all the time such as 24 hours it could wreck their sleeping schedule and it could burn your light out so i don't suggest keeping that on for 24 hours i didn't talk about this topic about african dwarf frogs see him going and hiding there um that they usually get along with most fish. Um, I know they do get along with guppies, neon tetras, zebra dinos. Um, there are they get along with snails, the sucker fish. There's a catfish in the back, and this yeah they get along with. Most fish, I know they get along with mollies as well, platies they don't have a problem with. But I do not suggest putting them with, like I said earlier, guppy fry, because they would eat guppy fry or any other baby fish. I don't suggest putting in. I'm not sure if they're, they're good with beta fish or not, because beta fish are kind of a fighting fish and do not tolerate people or animals that nibble. Now this is one of the hardest topics is to tell the different gender from female and male frogs. Now one way to tell the difference is females are usually more larger than males, which is shouldn't be too hard to tell in that case. Another way is that is to tell is that usually the male frogs have white bumps on the back of each front leg. I'm not sure if you can see it there. I can't see it too too good. And another way is when it is mating season, the male clings on to the female's back. And the male usually, the way to attract females, it is makes a vocalization sound. And usually the females spawn back. What is he doing down there? Okay, so that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed.